What's going on guys, it's your boy Sam Paddy Projects and we are back with the Audi TT. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a brake change on the front and rear um, front discs and just pads on the back because my other discs haven't come yet. But please allow me to show you, we are gonna put on some drilled and groove brake discs because it's well needed because these um, pads are coming to the end of our life and to be fair, it's always good to have a little cheeky upgrade. They look good and they definitely feel better. I had the same ones on my Civic Type R and they were pretty good. As for the pads, we'll find out about the pads, but let's jump straight in. No dilly dallying. Let's go. So let's take the covers off of the wheel bolts. If you're using a flathead screwdriver like me, don't scratch the rims, be careful. So let's loosen up the bolts. Get the car in the air, chuck an axle stand underneath, and don't forget, chop the back wheels. Nice and easy. So let's turn the wheel all the way towards us, so we've got a good angle for when we start the work. So we've just got to remove the retaining screw, which is on the brake discs. Now that can notoriously go bold. But this one hasn't, so let's keep it safe. So let's get, grab our ratchet, an extension, and a seven mil Allen key. So with this cover, let's be careful not to put any damage on it. So let's loosen it up, take it off by hand. And keep it safe. So let's loosen these up. So let's remove this retaining clip. Don't be like me, put your hand over it when you're taking it off. So use a flat edge screwdriver just to compress the caliper back just a little bit, enough to get the caliper loose. So grab your flat edge screwdriver just to remove this brake wear sensor. Should come off pretty easy. And let's put the caliper out of the way and cable tie it onto the spring. So now let's loosen up the brake carrier bolts. And they are a bit hench, so put your back into it. And there we go, that's one loose. And the second one. And we'll do the rest by a ratchet. I soon learned the best way to do this is by doing a retaining screw last. So let's pop the bonnet and open up that brake fluid reservoir because we don't want any back pressure. But make sure you put a rag around it just in case there's any spillage. So now you want to get the correct fitting of your compression tool to fit your caliper. So if you don't have one of these, you can use a big enough pair of grips, but you just have to be very careful not to nick the brake caliper boot. Just like that. So now let's clean up this brake disc of any oils that may have been on it for storing purposes and use a little bit of copper grease on the hub. But of course you want to sand it off and make it nice and flat, but the previous person had already put a bit of copper grease on it, so it was fine. Let's put that retaining screw back in. Let's put the brake caliper bracket back on. We'll do it up hand tight before we torque it down. A little bit of copper grease on the brake pads. Be sure not to get it on the other side though. Plug in the brake wear sensor. A little bit of copper grease on the pins as well, never harmed anyone. Brake pad in the caliper. Just make sure it fits in in the right place with the brake pads. And let's do up the pins. Now let's torque these down to spec. Oh, we are getting a bit professional now, aren't we, boys? Now 
I'm putting this retaining clip back on, put it in one of the holes first, bend it into place and put it in the bottom one. And can't forget the pin covers. Now let's get this wheel back on and the bolts in. Lower the car down. And let's make sure this wheel is torqued to spec. Whoa, real mechanic stuff. So it turns out the noise I was hearing was actually the front brakes. So this pad was on the inside, so you can see it. However, the outer pad still has a bit left on it. So yeah, it got to a point where it's making noise and then when I checked the front, it looked like, oh, they've still got meat on them. So it must be the back, but yeah, it was actually the front. So now that side is done and this side is done. Not gonna do the rears until next time. So let's take her out for a test drive. All right, so let's take her for a test drive, see if we can hear that noise. Okay, well I can't hear the noise, so that is a good thing. Yep, I can't hear it. Well, it looks like we fixed the issue because that brake pad was absolutely finished. It was gone. There was barely anything left on it. You can't even really say there was anything left on that. But yeah, it's a good thing. Let me just test out the brakes as well. And boy, do these feel sharp now. Damn, this is really good. But obviously with the MTech brake pads that I bought, obviously there is mixed views about it, but this car isn't gonna be tracked and really be put under any high performance type things. So then we will get some life out of them. Even if in some time in the future, I got to upgrade to uh, fast road pads, then that's what we'll do. So we're not gonna bother doing the rears today because we fixed the issue and I wanna wait until the discs come. But obviously if, you've, if you're able to do the fronts, the rears are gonna be pretty much the same. Like just compressing that caliper, taking it all off, changing over the discs and it will be done in a up and coming video because we still got to paint the calipers we still got a few cosmetic things to do so make sure you go and hit that subscribe button it's right down there i know you see it i see it you see it go on press it nice one it's your boy sam paddy projects and i'll catch you on the next one